Ashy, who gets a double, survives with six health, but up to gaming, can end it here. And uh, they tried to make the play with the War Machine in the back, which did a lot of damage, but Knight might not be enough, and TJ picks up two. Off the gaming, get the first win on board. And while the, the hard point struggles for E6, maybe still there. And was there any specific moment there that stands out to you as this is where that game went kind of out of control for E6 and Optic really took over? Uh, I wouldn't say moment, but like two themes. One, Dashy got streaked out like twice. And if you're getting streaked out, I think he goes on an 11 spree, then like a life or two later goes on like a six. Tough to deal with Dashy, but then two kind of key moments is Crim6 hits hold at barrels. I think he did it by himself as well. And of course, E6 sends a couple players on the rotation, two bodies in the hill, and he ends up winning the gunfight, and that just chips away at the time. And then TJ does the exact same thing at P1 on that final rotation while his teammates were actually winning the rotation over towards P2. And again, that's just stripping away 10, 15 seconds away from the opponent that you get themselves. Those are massive swings, honestly. Like it's small things, but if you do them repeatedly, it really does add up so those are two kind of key moments for me okay absolutely agree with you there as well uh here's a quick glance towards the end of the game and this is where it looked for a moment as if e6 had a chance chino of course forced to use the war machine does find the kill on takama as well and you know all the other fights towards the front of the hill one it, it looked like this was their chance yeah but of course it was let the saw duo towards the end scump and tj just repeatedly picking up kills i think tj probably goes big he kept an eye on the kill feed he picks up at least two on there he's on a four spree there's number five so you talk about a man that needed to step up and he did so of course even when tj falls now the reinforcements ran and you get the spawns and everything eventually goes right for optic a 34 and 19 performance or 20 there as he dashy falls right at the very end but like, up to gaming up 1-0 and jess caught up with karma before the game Thank you, Ben. Yeah, and I gotta say, he is just not in a good mood today. Uh, he was not happy about the way they played at Fort Worth. He said, yeah, we played like crap. Uh, he said, I, hopefully, we fixed a lot of things that went wrong, hopefully. He was not speaking with, uh, uh, with, with the air of a lot of confidence. He did not sound like he really was too happy about this. He did say, it's nice to be back here at the Pro League, uh, but he also kind of said, we're not really sure what to expect. The first two teams we're playing are what we think are two of the, uh, the, the better teams in their division, so we'll see. Over on the side of Enigma 6, I caught up with Kismet, and his attitude and his energy and reaction could not have been more different. He's coming in saying that they are so happy with how they placed at Fort Worth. He said, yeah, we played really well. We think we're a top team. He's coming in also saying that he feels they have a lot to prove to the fans and to the other teams here. He feels that other teams maybe didn't feel as though E6 did deserve to be at Fort Worth, and he wants to prove them wrong. So he's feeling good coming into this match. Uh, let's see how the rest of the series goes. Back over to the casters. Thank you very much, Jess. And it's interesting, right? Because you hear the players talking a little bit about their results over towards Fort Worth, and you have E6, you know, very, very happy. Top six up to getting very, very upset. But how things are so different when we talk about the Pro League chance. Yeah, so I mean, Optic went four and three when they were playing with a sub, which honestly is pretty good. But more importantly, the way that division has panned out, it's kind of chaotic. Like Luminosity, I think, is only at five wins. So if Optic wins this series or wins one of their next four series, which I got all week to do it, <laughs> then at worst case scenario, they're like tied for like four fourth place like they're almost guaranteed to be in that top half assuming they even like play poorly this week right so they're in a phenomenal spot in terms of seeding for the next open events london whatever it's sure. gonna be and then e6 i think is like three wins down like the division b is so stacked like top heavy right now and then some of the teams that are above e6 are splice and hunter thieves who are also gonna also be playing this week splice got a win so they have to make up for like a three win deficit against teams that are probably going to be winning at the same time. So in terms of Pro League, E6 is in a bit of a hole and Optic Gaming in a pretty good spot. But then he got flip moods for yeah. either team. It's and then, of course, strange. at the end of the day, like, if you want about seeding for London, like, even a good seed, you might end up in some random Never. pool of death. So just small things to think about. Yeah, the, the pools for London, how exciting that is going to be towards the end of this week, figuring out where all the teams are going to fall. Uh, but you're absolutely right. There's no guaranteed kind of safe pool as maybe there once was way back when in Call of Duty. As it stands, up to gaming 1-0 up. We're heading now over to a search and destroy Hacienda. General from E6 just finalizing his classes. Wants to make sure he has all of his bases covered. And of course, I think Hacienda, this is kind of Kismet's map, if yes. I remember correctly. Lee's back at the PLQ. He was the guy that was 
playing by himself constantly on an island, but at the PLQ was making massive plays. Had some ridiculous yep. SD KD, cuts through mid map on this map constantly and finds those holes, but it hasn't panned out recently for him. So now the question, even like Opti Gaming has to think about it, what is Kismet going to do? Do we have to be concerned out of, uh, about our flank constantly? Sure, sure. Is he going to switch up and play with his team? So uh, a lot for both teams to think about. It definitely is. And it's funny because in terms of play style, uh, you talk about island, Kismet definitely one that comes to mind, Crim6 as well. But uh, for me, Opti Gaming, I'm looking at TJ. I want to see TJ have one of those massive TJ. TJ like searchers for performances. I think that's fair, right? Like TJ and Dashy, well, obviously because they're both stellar <laughs> players, but more importantly, it was that S and D that was supposed to be like the game changer. Like Optic Gaming, <laughs> always been fantastic respawn. The S and D has struggled. They're supposed to be the search and destroy wizards. And TJ, well, at least at Fort Worth, granted, not many of them did, but didn't really show it. A lot of players stacked up mid map though. General with the first blood, and TJ does that's not what we're trade about. In that was the the exact perfect way of starting this game, right? Kismet shuts down TJ, the player that you said, you know, watch out for him, always being the playmaker. A good opening for E6, and now they find themselves with numbers. So four versus three, but you've got to use numbers to get more numbers, and, well, that's not going to happen. As Krim shuts down Chino, three versus three. Bomb is planted. Minor advantage to E6, but E6 traps over towards Rock, and, well, there's Krim collapsing in from mid-map. Diabolic is able to at least trade. It's now a 1v1. Karma goes for the challenge, and Karma doesn't win the fight. It's Diabolic that somehow throughout all of that chaos over towards Rock, stayed alive. I mean, it seemed like perfect teamwork for Optic for it a did. moment. Yeah. You got two players sliding up bomb bomb, baiting and switching perfectly. Then you're like, oh, Crim6 cutting through mid. This is the perfect situation. But you can see Diabolic gets away with the bullet, then Crim slides through the door. And of course, the reinforcements for E6 were in. Eight elf. All you need. So close, but Diabolic making plays. In round number one, advantage E6 here in the search. And you know, that was something that we, we talked a little bit about. We know E6 and their hard point woes. And it started the year, it was search and destroy. After the PLQ, that is. And boy, boy, have they improved in that. This is going to be a key map for me that they must win. They want any chance of taking this series. There's a quick glance over towards Karma. See, he's watching the left-hand side corridor. Meanwhile, his teammates, they've all pushed over towards the other side of the map. Bomb will be being planted over towards B. Uh, I don't think there's anything E6 can do to stop it. E6, you got Shino playing on an island. I don't even think he spotted that player in water. Everyone else is flanking. Dash is going to be here. He needs a little bit of help. Spots the players in the back. So Scump is on the rotation. And Scump is able to trade out the first kill. But there's a lot more coming in. Shino sniffs out Crim6, but does he get traded? No, Karma cannot find him. Of course, bomb down 2v3, E6, that are looking to swarm. And Karma's actually played that very, very well. It's trying to stay alive and wrap mid map, but it's been red. That says TJ's positioning, and that is everybody dead. Now it just comes down to who would like to take the defuse? Well, Chino at 575 away. They're going to give it to Frosty, not necessarily because of streaks, uh, more so because of Vision. And I like that call. I think Vision Pulse is. It's one of those late game, you're going to get it round 8, 9, 10, right. even 8 kind of at the earliest. So you feed it to this guy. So if you get in those clutch situations, well, you can see through walls. You can pick which bomb site <laughs> you want to go to. Yeah. So it is so nice to have Vision Pulse. And I, I will say, I think Optic Gaming did a, a fairly decent job trying to respond to the pressure from E6, like four in the back. Dashy baits his life, waits for the help of his comp, who trades out a couple kills. But of course, they gave up the bomb site for free because they trusted their ability to retake. And E6 made the right call. Definitely did. And they take that early advantage and double it. 2-0 up here in game two. Obviously, a couple of players working towards streaks. Still a long way to go. Is this going to be E6 just flying straight through the middle of the map? That looks like the, the game plan. Kismet is already hit. Down low connector. And he could be causing some problem over towards fences. Meanwhile, Diabolic, the man who in round one played very, very well, will fall. And now it comes down to that Kismet play straight through mid-map. What else can he find, though? Should be able to find at least one player to shoot in the back if he goes quick enough, but he doesn't cut mid yet. And meanwhile, his teammates are falling. And now, of course, off the gaming, I think they're going to be a little bit more concerned about the flank, but it looks like it's going to be General that has to deal with the pressure. Should have spotted the player, but he has an ICR, wins the gunfight. Kismet, by the way, wrapping back to help. So General might get Whoa. traded because Dash is underneath, but Kismet should be here to get the next kill, able to find it. Now you got a 1v1. Kismet and TJ Halley. 30 seconds left. Well, Kismet, the Search and Destroy superstar. TJ, the Search and Destroy two superstar as well. The difference is TJ currently 0-2 to TJ's 3-1. Bomb down. For Optic Gaming, TJ may have to just hop the bomb. It's a, a play which could work out. Depends. 
how quickly he wanted to do it. Kismet has planted for office. TJ, of course, knows that. He's going to try and sniff out Kismet's location. For Kismet, it's all about just playing time here. He only has to peek the bomb, doesn't have to do anything crazy. And I believe TJ has now been spotted in for Kismet. You don't have to take the gunfight, you do have to jump out the window. Now forced to pre-fight, TJ takes the fight, wins the fight. That, ladies and gentlemen, is choking, jumping out of a window. Hands shaking just a little bit. Maybe the nerves kind of creeping in, but honestly, that was expertly played by Kismet right up until yeah. he missed the window. Uh, <laughs> Pretty, pretty important part there, really, of that whole scenario, that whole 1v1. But credit, really, for me, goes to, to, to General in, in that round. The pre-fire down low after he finds the first pickup top, which was a hard gunfight to take with the ICR, connects with enough bullets where Kismet can just slide through and trade. That read, understanding, he, he, I know I'm going to be pushed. Is it going to come from up top? Is it going to come from down low? Pre-firing, really smart stuff. But it doesn't matter. Optic Gaming, clutch up, and it's the Iceman that wins the round. And those are the rounds that he absolutely needs to win. Obviously, you're down too. Oh, that's not nice. a great spot. You need to turn <laughs> things around. But more importantly, again, the man to highlight needs to kick it up and search. By the way, Crim6 rocking zero. Didn't even realize that going on. Well, if he earns it, it is incredibly annoying to deal with to the side of E6. But so are stuns. Kismet able to find one scum, trying to get out with his life. Actually, Karma's there with him. Bodies just dying left and right. Advantage E6. Scump tries to make the play. He gets cut down. 2v4, surely this one is over. It is Frosty with the double. Uh, and one thing to, to know, if you kind of look at how E6 have evolved in Search and Destroy throughout the year, if you just take a look at that play from Kismet, right? He pushes down low, finds the picking connector, and he, he knows he's stunned Karma, and he knows Karma's there. Two, three months ago, he pushes that. He tries to take that fight and, and may give away his life. The new Kismet, for me, values his life way, way more than we've seen in the past. And I think that's one of the reasons E6 is searching and has improved so much. And if that's accurate, you got to keep in mind, at PLQ, you could do that. Yes. It might be successful. Yes, yes. There's a little bit of different beast here in the Pro League teams. We'll be much quicker on getting those trades. But either way, another very nice round for E6 to get under their belt. But obviously, Search and Destroy was never their problem back at Fort Worth. Maybe right. in the past, uh, it was. But this is where they have been clutch repeatedly so. And, well, they got a couple more rounds to win. First blood goes the way of die. Bollock Karma just going to get taken down. Oh, that bollock does so well just to stay alive. I'm saying around Rock, but Kismet meets a shot punch from TJ, who once again wins that mini 1v1 battle, but still 4v4. Crim's in trouble. Crim will fall. It's General Crocodiling in the water. Almost found Scump as well, but it's a trade there. Well, surely as Diabolic goes for a bit of a scuba dive, he finds Scump. Also very close to the attack five. It's a 2v1. It's down to the other young man on the squad. And he's already been sniffed out. Dashi staying alive, though. 35 seconds left. The problem is if Chino doesn't get close here towards Diabolic, Diabolic could be in a lot of pain. As again, the gunfight comes through. Dashi trapped between both players. Reads the situation very well. Wins the first gunfight. Can he slide away in time? No, he can't. Chino hunts him down. Ooh, that is a, a stressful round, but again, a good one for E6 to get. And I think the best part was what? Diabolic not going for the bomb plant. Yeah. He knows Chino's way in the back of the spawn. You have the information. Your only job for Diabolic is to not dive from mid-map, which, of course, he does manage to get to the bomb as Dash is coming through. And then you play the 2v1 pretty well. So just I, I think the first bloods what uh, have been the key situation yep. the entire game so far for E6. Let's not forget, if Kismet can jump out of a window, this could be 5-0. This could be a very ugly game of Search and Destroy. It's not, though. And it's 4-1. I'm taking needing to make plays now on the attacking side. There's Chino at the top middle. What is he going to be able to spot? Well, a lot of pressure comes mid-map, and Optic fly through to take control of the site. But here is Chino up top, and all of a sudden, a, a 5v3. You blink, and it's a 3v3, and this could be even worse for Optic Gaming because Frosty putting down some shots. TJ has found a nade kill. Krim shuts down Frosty, and those kills coming in at the perfect time because General was flanking. Now the 1v3. Honestly, now you just might want to get off the map as quick as possible because they can just shoulder peek forever. You get the bomb plant down. 1v3. It's a very difficult, if not impossible, round for Jenner to win, but he's going to go for it, see if he can connect with anything. Of course, while he's doing this, TJ might just earn his grab slam. Or he's going to be creeping up on it as well. 28 seconds left. Hasn't found a thing. Spots General. General weak. Jamal goes for another jump across, but has to take his time to heal. And this is all but time before General falls. Hope to get their second round on the board. 4-2, still advantage E6.
And I think what just a, a good opening break sent like yeah, three bodies, better. if not four, up yeah, through the top better. hallway. Scum baits out his life to get the players on rock distracted, and then still nice plays had to be made by Optic Gaming through the hallway, but the plays were successful. So good bounce back round, and I think we've been almost perfect with get first blood, win the round. Yeah, almost. It seems that way. Yeah, it, with hard, possible yeah. one exception, but I think other than that, we're at least five or six. Right. TJ. Working towards some streaks of his own at 425 has slam. You expect to see that Raf Slam make its way over towards A. And if there is a quick push from E6, he could be in some trouble. Instead, E6 spread the map, playing for information. And you see if they can maybe get a free kill and then work their numbers. Bomb finally starts to push over towards B, but I hear a big call up there from Crim6. He spotted something. And General could be in some trouble. Is it going to be Crim that's in trouble? Well, there's the kill. General falls. Advantage up to. I would not be surprised if that tack five gave it away. If that sound cue made Crim6 turn his head around, because Crim6 definitely can hear everything that's nearby. Of course, Kismet does get the trade. And honestly, for E6, you kind of got bodies all over the map. It's kind of an awkward situation for Optic. I don't know if they're going to be expecting any of this to come in. Divebox cleared everything out. Should be able to kill TJ. Has another player connector. Spots the information. Karma's going to be trapped in between a couple players, but Divebox plays it slow. He gets picked off, and Karma, well, he's just going to do his best to survive. He's not able to trade him out, but 18 oh, seconds. Boy. Kismet, though, he's able to win, too. You still got to get the bomb. You know where Krim is, and Kismet really wants to kill him, and... He doesn't. Now Crim6 is able to get away. Chino, though, should be able to plant this bomb. Yep. And that's the problem for Krim. He has to concede the bomb plant. Nothing he can do. Another 1v1 in this search and destroy. For Chino. He just has to patrol, make sure Krim doesn't hop on that bomb. Krim, of course, lucky mid-map. Time is of the essence. 30 seconds. Of course, this kill and defuse would be mighty helpful for Krim and his streaks. He spotted Chino. And he almost has Chino dead to right. Chino plays the corner. Chino somehow wins the fight. Beanie Chino, a whole new Chino. The power of the beanie right there. All right, so JP definitely needs to do wow. advanced stats. Yes, you I got, need to know his stats with that beanie on his Like, wow. normal Chino, fantastic player. <laughs> you throw the beanie on, that's like LeBron in playoffs, which obviously <laughs> not happening this year, but for Chino, it very well Ooh. may be. With the beanie. <laughs> I saw Davis scream. It's his new gimmick. <laughs> I would hope so. Nice 1v1 win. Out. TJ won his. But then Chino gets the best of Krim. Wow. The lot, difference maker of rounds. Unbelievably close rounds that we've seen in this search. And well, advantage E6. 5-2. It's a big lead. And oh, Frosty looking to connect. And I mean, that's just not the best start to a round of search and destroy. The grab slam invested. Everybody else basically falls. A team kill comes through. It's a two versus one. After all the immediate chaos, it's all down to Mr. Three Time. Dante Karma, what can you produce? Of course, he is on the attacking side. Frosty in general, up three six. As Karma tries to wrap the map, hasn't found anything just yet. Little does he know. Both these six plays over towards the B site. 40 seconds. And Karma, of course, has to go for this round. Z6 at map point, and that is almost blessed timing. As he gets to the B site, as he starts to plant, E6 rotate away. Colin might just do this. He plants so he can watch it from mid. E6 doesn't know it yet, but they're going to be double challenging up top. That is absolutely worst case scenario for Karma. <laughs> so all that tension, all that build up for literally nothing to happen. And General going to have a little bit of fun with his teammate. Nice, nice accuracy, General. Why not? <laughs> See, now you got to shoot everywhere else to pretend like you weren't trying to hit Yeah, 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 yeah. of course, of like, course. Nah, yeah, guys, yeah. I'm just messing around. No, I was just, I was just, you know, shooting a scare, shooting a scare as E6 win the search and destroy, tie things up 1-1. One, one. We have a series on our hands now, Chance. This is exactly how all of their series went at Fort Worth. You lose map number one, yep. then you just win. It's the 2-3-5. It's the, two, three, five. It's the old school 2-3-5 E6 are trying to pull that off once again, and if they can get a respawn win, they could very well take this series. Playing such and destroy as clinical as that. 2-3-5 special might just work. Hell, I'm sure they'd even take a 2-4-5 special at this point. Just win a respawn at any cost. But as it says, E6 up to gaming the third game of the day. We're all tied up at 1-1. One, one. We'll be back with game three after this.
It's E6 Optic Gaming Series tied 1-1. This is a series which can go back so far in time. Uh, not necessarily one of the biggest rivalries, but it's definitely a rivalry. That's for sure. Optic E6 1-1, as we said. But here's where it gets interesting, Chance, because heading into game three, both teams are pretty good at control. Yeah, so you talk about that like 2-3-5 that E6 needs to take, but 5-1 and one, and, and control it for worse. So it's not like they were bad at respawn. It's hard point struggling. Control was just fantastic. But on the flip side, <laughs> after gaming, 4-1. and one. Yeah. So you're placing top 12. You're not winning series, but your control is still on point. So this is honestly the map that might decide the entire thing. If Opti Gaming wins this, you imagine they're good for the hard point to get that nice 3-1. If E6 takes this, you're thinking, worst uh -oh. case, we see a map five for them, because who knows what even happens to the next hard point? Like, you, you never know. You can't count E6 out at all. And again, to reiterate the importance in terms of the standings in the league, it's the very, very much opposite for both of our two teams. Opti Gaming, one win, and I think it's like guaranteed like top three, top four. And that's one week throughout the entire week. So plenty of games for them. They're looking good in terms of seeding. And then for E6, they've struggled thus far. The other teams that are ahead of them are here as well. More than likely, they'll be picking up some wins along the week. They need wins desperately, desperately. If they want to guarantee themselves playoffs. And I, you know, I, I wouldn't say desperate necessarily, because I don't think they're desperate. Like you heard, they're, they're feeling confident. They're, they're feeling confident because they came off a top six win. Right. Or, sorry, that's the point. Uh, they're not desperate because I think now you get top six, you're confident in your team, and you're like, okay, even if we get a bad seed, we go in a tournament. We know we're going to be capable, but you still want it for when it comes to playoffs. You don't want it to the bottom. You can play well at all the open events, but if you're not in playoffs, yeah. it's like, eh, well, like winning an event isn't going to guarantee you playoffs. That's well, avoiding the play in bracket at the very least. Yeah, exactly that, right? Just finish top four. That's all you really have to do. And for E6, a, a win here is going to give them a big boost to that. And we'll see if they're able to do it because the control chance obviously mentioned the stats. A five and one team at control for court with a four and one team in control. This really is going to be the decider or potential to be the decider. It's going to be a frequency. If we go further, uh, frequency and payload, just to, as we didn't really talk about it at the start of the series, chance, the, the final three maps, if they go that distance, what are your thoughts? I, again, I think whoever wins this map is <laughs> serious. Like, th that is my thoughts. Okay. I, I think Opti Gaming is going to be good for the frequency hard point. Sure. Maybe not by a mile, but I, I definitely give them the edge. And then the payload, I don't know. I, I just think E6 have been really put together in Search and Destroy. They're they searching to figure good. things out. And it's, like, it's polished. You think about Payload and be like, oh yeah, Dash is amazing with the sniper. Frosty's not bad. Like that that last round we saw, he was hitting some nice shots. Yeah, like I think he's ripping two. people off ahead. He's, it is, yeah. it, he's at least going to be able to put up a fight. So uh, I think this is the most important map we have, Ben. Absolutely right. Gonna agree with you more. We start off on board with E6, and it's a good start for them. Two kills responded instantly by Optic Gaming, but more importantly for E6, the first tick into the B zone. Be able to get more though. That's the question. Over half. Dashi goes down over at pipes. And well, there's the second tick. Could they get more chance? Well, absolutely they can. They make it all three. Of course, General's going for the split push. General, though, he's going to be in between three players. Needs to take one with him. He does not. Frosty is now also by himself. A team kill, though, does come in. And he's got these players stunned out. Able to win one. Obviously knows the second is inside. Frosty. And at the very least, he stayed alive long enough that his teammates should be close to helping him out. Eventually does get taken down in Optic Gaming. Well, they do have map control. They have stabilized just a little bit. Frosty did very, very well. If his teammates were able to get there a little quicker, it could have been one of those scrappy fights over towards you. Just a lot of contesting. Instead, it's a 24 to 21 life advantage for E6. Now the push is going to come through. Krim with one. Dashi not able to find uh, anything. In fact, it's the mistake. It does find General, but Chino with two. As the contest again comes through. Karma looking for the pick, not gonna find it. We start some progression now over towards A. Yeah, that wide challenge can be brutal if anyone's posted up, just waiting for it to happen. So he gets dropped. Dash though on the uptake, only able to take down one with him. Full control right now for E6. You gotta fly in. The grapple gun is gonna help him out to get bodies in the hill, but everyone's dying. Crim6 by himself now. He falls as well. E6, round number one, oh. is all theirs, and it wasn't even close. Yeah, it really, really wasn't. Even when Optic were able to set up over towards A, it was broken very, very quickly. I mean, Frosty almost made the play by himself. Yes, he had the assistance of a stun and a couple of players not using tap mask, but either way, a very good opening round there for E6. And it all started with that m massive aggression towards B. They, they get the cap very quickly. And uh, I mean, when you do that, you get the momentum. 
it's very, very hard to defend. And it's not only that, like having the aggression over towards B, but I think after the game he spent at least one player through A to go and try to spawn kill. Yeah. But E6 took care of him as quickly as you possibly could. And I think they did so without even having anyone fall. So you take care of that guy. Now you get free clearance on the map. Meanwhile, your teammates are winning gunfights inside the hill. So that is a round of anything that could go right does go right. Now for round number two, Frosty wants one more thing to go his way. 50 points off of streaks. <laughs> the EKA, the stun assist, anything. And his uptick. Say anything you can do, well, we can do better. If not, just as good. The B push off the rip already. That first tick locked in, looking for more. He's pushed very far up. General Reddit, the trade comes through. Again, keep your eye on Frosty Street progression. Never mind, he's dead. Now it comes down to Diabolic at 325. Kismet's close as well, but B is gone. That is going to be capped up. Up to him with 2 minutes 15 to cap A. I, I think we're all going to be square at the end of this two minutes, gents. Well, the problem is for Optic, they don't have a ton of map control because a couple players are pushed into their base. And of course, that's a gunfight Crim6 needs to win, but Kismet has the SOG. And actually, as you say that, while well, they take care of business, now you got bodies inside oh, no. the hill. A couple players from E6 are here. Karma stunned for what seems like an eternity. Still alive, though, inside the hill. The lightning strike comes in, because, by the way, Dashy getting more streaks, it seems. He's got that. The gunfight's inside the hill. Comes down to the 1v1. Crim6 eventually able to come out on top. They get the clearance, but E6, for the moment, has stabilized. Of course, they did give up that light. That shot punch just to secure the streak. But is the streak even going to be enough? It's a 16-16 life count as Chino and the boys from E6 fly straight towards Optic Gaming's base. They could be in some serious trouble here, maybe getting spawn trapped a little bit, or if nothing else, just losing a lot of lives, maybe unnecessarily, as Kismet slides across once again. Optic Gaming players coming off spawn, and Kismet being just so annoying to deal with. He finds another kill before falling, but even with all of that, it's still a 12-11 game. Make that a 10-10 game. As a flank comes through from Optic Gaming, they get inside the A zone, only to be contested, but it's Dashi the Shot Punch King, it seems, who finds his way into the zone again. Tempest is available, doesn't need to. Why? The man can Shot Punch, the man can kill everything in sight. Can he find four? No, he can't. Finally drops. E6, though, break right back in. 4v5, you get one more shot, make it a 3v5, you get a couple kills, and Optic Gaming can pull this off, but honestly, it, it might just have to be TDM at this point. You, you need an opening break, and you have the Lightning Strike if you want to spawn kill potentially, and well, nothing to spawn in, so I take that one back. <laughs> but you still have to find these kills. You need to find this opening pick. Oh, and Chino has War Machine, Kismet, Slam, Diabolic, Tech 5. Do you invest to secure the win? It's a 5v3. You'd love to win this round without investing anything. I mean, Tech 5 would surely be the first to go as Chino cats a scump. Now, you probably don't even need to invest anything whatsoever. You have all your angles covered. It's a 5v2. Sheena with all the info on Dashi. Sheena, pretty rough spot. As Kismet now allowed to fly forward. Doesn't want to needlessly give away his life. Optic with 30 seconds to clutch up what would be a unbelievable round of control. Yeah, and E6 have just, they, they've played it too smart. They, they've played it way too patient. They read the flank. They did everything correctly. Didn't throw away a single life. And it's a well Say put that. together team. It's a 1v3 with 18 seconds, Ben. Oh, he's going to use oh, the 8 as well. Eight, yeah, you're right. Hold on a minute. Karma looking to really clutch up. There's oh, no. Gonna happen, There's no. no. Ah, I saw the name. I thought if he gets lucky, maybe you know, he slides in, he hit fires, he makes it a 1v2. But not going to be the case. E6, 2-0 up. And they did win that round without having to invest the war machine. No attack 5 and no grab slam. Do it with the guns. I mean, you expect it, but you never know. Sometimes you just feel a little bit better pulling something out, just and, to be sure. And again, they did everything right. Like on the opening break, they gave up B for free to try to get Frosty streaks. That was unsuccessful, but then they started spawn killing like crazy. Like yeah. Gino with a beanie is a different <laughs> animal and the same beast because he was able to get, uh, I think, maybe a lightning or he came close to it. He goes on like a six spree. He's making big plays as well. Now you got the grab slam with four players in front. He doesn't think they're here, but now they are. He got there. Does he even need to go over top or do your teammates win the gunfight? You don't need the grass slam when oh. he got a frosty. They break on through, one tick gone, Optic Gaming coming out of the uh, base. And this is so scary now for Optic Gaming because you would have loved for Kismet to invest that just to cap A, but he may actually get this entire A cap for free. 
with the assistance there of Frosty. And now you can use it at B to potentially close out the game. A hasn't been kept just yet. Finally, it goes through. Optic scurrying over towards B, but Diabolic in a position to maybe cause some problems. The stun comes out, but Optic survive for now. They still have to run into the Tempest of General, though, who connects with Dash. He connects with Karma. General not missing. One and a half picks. He connects with TJ as well. That's three in quick succession. The War Machine is out. The streaks are in. They still have a grab slam. If it isn't enough, this was a clinical display of control on frequency that wasn't even close. There's the explanation mark from Kismet. The triple with the grab slam. They just blew Optic out the water chance. They're looking fierce. They're looking very fierce. And if I'm on the E6 camp, I'm feeling very confident right now because I mean, my takeaway, two minutes ago, at the start of the map, I was saying, <laughs> yeah, whoever minutes. wins this map wins this series. But honestly, with E6 looking like that, like, again, you can't count them out of the hard point because that was just as good as it could possibly get. And that, that is the, the thing, right? If you're an E6 fan out there, you're like, just come on, please. Just fix fix our hard point, right? If you just fix that, we'll be contending with the best of the best because they're search and destroy. Fantastic, right? Their, their control, definitely, definitely top par. It just really has been that game one and game four, the hard point letting him down sometimes. Again, three and seven record hard point, and you still manage to place top six. That's what I'm saying. You, you fix that's that, you break that barrier. You go from a really good team to elite. Like, that. that's the only right. step that's holding E6 down. And frankly, if they pull this off here, that's certainly a nice continuation from what we saw at forward. And then you have to obviously think about, you know, what we heard from Jess in between game one and game two when she was talking to, uh, to Karma, and I believe it was Kismet from E6, saying the, the kind of mood in the camp, right? Optic coming here after a very, very poor performance. Uh, their head may not necessarily be in it. Karma obviously saying he's a little frustrated with how things went. Uh, and on the flip side, you know, for E6, they're feeling great. But here's a quick glance at the Scuff Gaming play of the game from the control. And it's funny because you would have thought, uh, just seeing the stuff, Oh, Kismet with a grab slam. It's probably going to be like a quad or a five. Doesn't even use it. E6 fly into A. Frosty gets a double kill out of nowhere. And the round is basically over at this point, Chance. And it's just brutal. And, and it's one of those points as well that, like, if you start burning all these specialists and you don't get a good use out of them, well, then Optic Gaming has theirs, and maybe they could start the snowball to get right, back into right. the series. And then that doesn't happen. You don't need the grab slam. You have the perfect opening break. Then I think you have General with the Tempest. Meanwhile, the hot block being as annoying as always. But General picks up a couple of kills. So you get a good use there, and then you're just you're screwed. You're stuck in your base. You don't have clearance on the outer. You got to cut through winter, but then you got to get past the grab slam and everything else. And of course, I think that third shot on TJ basically shuts it down. Yep. You got Chino using the war machine. So you stop the snowball by pouring in everything and just running the other team over. Yeah. It was uh, a pretty brutal ending. It really was. And I guess Kismet not investing the craft slam at the start of the round. A blessing in disguise. Not that it really even mattered because nope. it was General with the Tempest that picked up four. Chino with the War Machine that found the fifth. It really was just the uh, the icing on the cake, the padding of the stats, the triple craft slam. And now we go to a frequency hard point, which, uh, again, if you're off the gaming, I think at this point, with the way you just got bullied out, yeah, you're, you're thinking, oh, like, maybe Fort Worth. Like, I don't, like maybe in their minds, they're going to be like, it was a fluke, we'll bounce back. Right. And, you, and of course, you want to go into a week with as much confidence as possible. But any confidence they had after those last two maps, you got to feel a little bit rough because, like, that, it was just brutal. And obviously, it's important to, to mention, you know, we just had Fort Worth, right? You now have just one week of kind of land games, if you will, to improve upon those poor performances. And then you go straight over to London. Yes, you have three weeks to practice online, but it, it, it's it's this, I don't necessarily want to call it practice, but these games on land, which are so, so helpful for the players. All right. But when all is said and done, it's only a 2 win <laughs> It is only a six. As good as their two wins are, it's only a map. It doesn't matter if you win 3-0 or 3-2 in the control, a win's a win. Now it comes down to the frequency hard point off the game and trying to bounce back, and that's the opening break they need. Clean back. five down, everyone in the hill, surging on forward. By the way, E6 spawning, well, all the way out towards fourth. And yeah, Dashi just flew straight over towards him. That's one play from E6, that's just spawned good. And that was diabolic. And Dashi has had a great series all game long. It was Scump who really struggled in that last game. I think he finished 7 and 12 his final stat. In fact, it was probably 7 and 13 after that grab slam hit him. But a much better stop from him. I mean, I think Karma was 4 and 12 as well. Yeah, like, ever, no one brought up the game. He was having a great game. Maybe Dashy had a nice moment trying to get streaks, which he's trying to do again. I think this would be what? If he connects with the Lightning, like the 5th or 6th yep. or 7th, whatever streak fifth. he's gotten, 
in just this series alone. He gets the hill time. He's going to be good to get it. E6, all the players coming around back. He's able to tag up a couple, getting the kills, killing his teammates, trying to stand alive. Gets the hell sore. Mr. Do-It-All, 6-0, trying to get spawns for his team as well. What more do you want, Ben? I mean, how can you lose with this guy on your team? <laughs> right, when he, oh my lord, Kismet, take a seat, son. You just got sat down. Dashi with streaks, Optic with a massive, massive lead after the first hill, and they don't look like they're gonna slow down here on P2. I mean, apparently not. This is just getting insane. Luckily for E6, they got at least three points on board, so you've gotten past the, the zero point <laughs> call, but I'm gaming. Three points! That left side of the kill feed has been nothing but green. You talk about dashing with streaks. Well, Skunks at six and one at everything. Everything's going right for Optic. You got 24 seconds to win a rotation. And you got streaks to aid the rotation as well. Dashi. Three quarters. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean what, what it is. Yeah. What do you even do at that point? The streaks are going to come through. E6 are in a lot of trouble here, folks. A lot of trouble, let me tell you. Dashi and Karma will find a couple. Dashi actually team kills with the Lightning, but they've already managed to get over towards Balcony, so at least the hard point could be contested. Finally, Dashi dies after what feels like an eternity. And E6 can do a little bit of damage limitation. But Optic, they're not slowing down. They're flying straight towards E6. And I don't know if that's bad communication or just an errant lightning strike that takes down TJ, but that kind of stuffs the first push. But on the second push, he got Crim6, was able to pick up two, which at the very least gives you clearance for Optic Gaming of pushing him from the front. Of course, they do have a 70-point lead. They're going to get at least a little bit of this time. I think a Nate sticks a player, but Dashi maybe just kills him before anything else happens. Dashi finds a third. Dashi finds a fourth. He's, overlap his he's baiting his teammates for good reason. He's killing everything, Ben. <laughs> he's 17 on one. Out of him. 17 on one. Gets another lightning. A hellstorm still. I mean, uh, what do you do? What do you do against this? What's Matt 5? Payload. Okay. What well, do you think about payload? Okay. Maybe Frosty pulls out the sniper here on P4, gets Warms the shot up. a little bit warm for the next map. Or maybe E6 makes the comeback. You never know. I mean, because Dashi will slow down. Dashi's controller would need to unplug for the rest of the game at this rate. Look, he'll slow down because it's impossible to keep up this pace. You know, There's we, simply no way. You, you know, you'd think, you'd, you'd think, really, wouldn't you? But I you would. just never know with this young man. His performances throughout the year have been just mind blowing. I mean, you think about Rookie of the Year, obviously last year the conversation was Kenny. I mean, in, this year it's all that. Like, he's not even a rookie. As really easy. He but... <laughs> played last year, but like just MVP of the year. Just just give it to Dashi now because he really is just that good. Did Gunless die, Ben? Has Temp gone away? Because you talk about like average I placings. Don't care. Not the game. I, I've, said, I've, I've said it in the past. I, 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 I personally think an MVP, it doesn't matter about your placings. That's just my personal opinion. I think it's how valuable you are to any team that you could put Dashi in. And I think, oh, you're going to get these performances no matter who his teammates are. 22 and 3. Karma uses the wall machine. So, yeah, payload? Yeah, payload. So, we did say before this map started of like, all the hype we were giving E6 up to one, yada, yada. It's still just a map. Like, it doesn't matter how much sure. you win by, it's still just a map. So if I'm E6, we're thinking, okay, we struggled at hardpoint early on. We were winning these game number fives. And even if you get completely destroyed here on frequency, it's just a map. Yeah. That's all it is. You know, it's just a player with double the kills of everybody else in the lobby. That's all. That's all it is. You can chalk that up and think about your game five, but it's still worrying for up the game. By no means is this, oh, you know, they're going to take momentum from this and fly into a game five and blow E6 out. Not at all. E6's search. Very good, but a couple of those 1v1s may go a little bit differently, and you never know. Could have been a closer game, but we can only hope if you're a neutral that you get a closer game, because this game four not been close at all. Imagine how nice it is, like on that third hill when Dashi picked up four, of like every single one of his teammates died in a 1v1 gunfight, and then he cleans them up. And imagine listening to those comms, like, there's a guy here, Dashi calls out dead, and then the next one dead. One and here, at the end dead. of it, you're like, nice shot, dude, thanks, yeah. man. This is great. One thing he's going to need to work on, though, is those lightning strikes. Another team kill comes through. Well, he'll have a lot of practice. <laughs> sure does. He gets him a lot. Gets him enough. There's Optic with the back spawn. Fly into the hill. Shot Kara. Dashi wins another gunfight against a, a 200 health opponent. Chino does finally slow him down with a nade, but it's 186 to 52. This would have to be more than perfect. 
E6. Oh. That's how well they have to play here if they want to come back in this game. I mean, you can see why E6 is starting to chip away at that lead. Dashi has massively slowed down. He was like 18 and 2. Now he's only 28 and 7. Oh, God. So that's how you're able to get, like, I don't know, 20 points on board on a hill? <laughs> that's what it correlates to. That'd be an interesting stat, really, wouldn't it? And the points you're able to get from Dashi slows down from 18 and 2 to 28 and 7. Finally. Finally, E6 get a little bit of control, but you need full 60, full 60. It's just a tie of the game. They've dug themselves in such a big hole thanks to really Dashi's just great start. Really is as simple as that. He's got Slay him with him though. Was at the start, 17 and 9. Should give him some credit for the, his performance after a very, very slow game three. He's really turned things around. Is up to control the hill again. 206 to 73. I wonder how annoying that is. What? For like Skunk to be like, I just had a great game and like we are now acknowledging it now, but like it almost just gets completely overlooked. I mean your teammate like, has double your kills. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, like, what? Just, oh my god. One man can cry. Kismet in the hill, picks up two nice kills, doesn't matter. Nope, I the game and gets the final ten seconds. They're gonna have a hundred and fifty point lead. Give or take. Something like that. Uh, all right, is on your head son. The trophy comes out, bounces off the teammate's head. Still good, Kismet forced to use the grab slam. That sums up their game, really doesn't it? Tries to slam, doesn't connect with the slam. And did it use the slam? Oh, it used half the slam. That really does sum up E6's game right there. <sighs> a lot of things do. The only thing that would top it all off is if Dashi gets like, what? Another a five man right at the very end of it. TJ though, gonna stuff Kismet from getting inside. He picks up one. Just trying to do our due diligence is Opti Gaming. Trying to get these final 12 seconds. Scump. He does take the fist to the face, and you got War Machines out, you got everything out, you got Karma picking up two nice kills. It's just, it looks like a different Optic Gaming than what we just saw 10 minutes ago in their game three. Well, the, their hard point scrims have been phenomenal. Well, <laughs> snapped, snapped onto Chino with the Tempest. Puts it away, there's a kill up top. Hey, you fancy one more, Dashi? Yeah, put the explanation mark on it. Oh, you can't win it here. Took a, a little too long to take that fight with Frosty as he jiggle peeks and Frosty wins the fight. But it is now just a formality of the final few seconds. As Karma spams the war machine and that, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the more one-sided games of Hardpoint you're going to see all week. That was over from hill number two. Yep. Maybe hill number three if you want to be generous, but the storyline for the entire series is E6, Hardpoint struggles seems to be continued. For Optic Gaming, it's been, well, quite the opposite uh, of like their control has been good, but obviously not as good as it needs to be. But can they win a search and destroy? That's the question. And of course, you know, we talked about all the stats and one stat we didn't talk about. Me and you, game five. It, hey, what's just, up, man? it just always seems to happen. And we find ourselves first game of the week going to another one. We're back after this with Payload Search and Destroy, E6 versus Optic.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Third game of the day, Optic E6, and it goes the distance. The game five, search and destroy. It's gonna be payload the map chance. We kind of went the way you thought it was gonna be. The two hard points in the way of the green wall, everything in between thus far to E6. Now, who takes the series? That's a great question. I mean, again, I kind of want to stick with the theme of I said, whoever wins the control wins this series. So maybe an edge to E6. I know they've been decent on payload, but they haven't been as good on payload as they have been at Hacienda, for example. Okay. Like, you go to Hacienda, I know Kismet's going to be doing some freaky stuff. I know they're going to be getting a lot of first floods. And I have less confidence in E6 on this map, but still I think it might give them the edge for the win. So someone obviously needs to pick it up for Optic Gaming. Dashi's obviously been on point. Maybe he just <laughs> needs been, to get streaks uh, in every single uh, game mode. And he's been okay. He's been all right. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't know how much I want to like focus on TJ, for example, because like at the start of the Hacienda, like he loses that first blood engagement against Kismet, but he clutches his one v one. So like, sure. he's there. But everyone from the gaming needs to pick it up and search. Like everybody. I, I don't think there's an exception to that. Like not even Bruce has been like good, but. I think everyone just needs to be a little bit better. And I have to imagine that for Fort Worth, it's one of the things Optic Gaming went and focused on. So I hope so. I expect a much more competitive map here on map number five than what we saw on map number two and three and four. <laughs> and kind of In whichever direction. <laughs> Either way, hopefully a good ending to this series. It's been uh, probably a, a highlight reel at times from a dominant game three for E6 to well, anything you can do, we can do better for Optic Gaming heading into game four. Now the game five search. Again, to reiterate, the game two, you know, if you look at the score, it wasn't close, but the rounds was a lot that went down to 1v1. A couple of things go differently. It could have been very, very close. It's actually Money Cheen pulling out the sniper rather than I mean, he's wearing his beanie, Frosty. of course. Be beanie Cheen is a different, different beast. I think he swaps out of it as well. So I think off the opening break, he knows the pressure's coming to mid, which, by the way, Kismet, the Kismet of old, sometimes he just gets blooded and well, Karma able to find the second. He did not switch away from the sniper. So there's whiff number one in general has to deal with the entire optic gaming team that's uh, a lot of pressure coming his way one of which is dashy but to his credit he scrambles away but bomb has gone down so three v5 retake chino with the sniper rifle if you're gonna get a pick you've got to get it very very quickly to make this happen of course they're just waiting for the pressure to come up back once frosty gets clearance chino makes his move but no one's peeking just yet. Frosty, of course, ICR, not the gun for the job, and this round should all but be over, and everyone's going to fall in kind. You get first blood, you win the round, and again, for E6, it's been a bit of a theme. You live by the Kismet, you die by the Kismet. That round, he goes for it. Just slides straight in into two Opti Gaming members that are just saying, yeah, we'll take the free kill. We appreciate right. it. You can't, you can't get baited like that if, you, if you're Kismet, to the point that I, I kind of made in the game, too, about just valuing his life a little more. That's an example of him doing pretty much the, the exact opposite there, trying to force an engagement, which maybe you don't have to force. And, and granted, he's a great search and destroy player. Yeah. Like you can try to make a play. He got a teammate there with him. But again, Opti Gaming just responded perfectly to it. Karma even came on the flank through tunnels at the perfect time. So. Nothing much that you could do if you're E6 other than bounce back in this round, try to get that first blood. Karma passively watching outskirts. Krim is going to be watching everything else. And well, there's your information. You want to know where E6 is playing. Uh, it's going to be an A push. Scump is watching any rotation through mid map. So E6 a little pinned here. As long as Scump doesn't give this up. Now he gets the information. He's actually spotted one of the plays from E6 sliding across. Doesn't necessarily need a challenge, but Kismet. But under a little bit of pressure here, two players. The first couple of kills come through. He's gonna be ran at. But Dashy, not able to clean up the kill as Karma escapes with his life. It's a 3v3. TJ, nice little flank there on towards Kismet, makes it a 3v2. Instantly he's out. General levels it up. Under 28 seconds left. The bomb is down, but not planted down, just on the ground. Down scum, by the way, has been here forever. You can just see how much of a thorn oh. in his side he is. Karma as well comes down to a 1v1, bombs it down. You got a saw, finish the kill. He does. And off the game, you get a round win off of some nice plays. Well, from quite a few players. Scump obviously just causing so many problems. He's in connector. E6 has to play slow because they're waiting for him to make his move. And then, of course, Karma just doing Karma things. That's, yeah. That gunfight wins him the round, no doubt. And that's one of those where, if you're E6, you're so frustrated. How many shots did you get down? How much damage did you do without finishing either of those kills? Could have massively changed the round if you pick him up just a little bit earlier. But it's not the case. And Optic Gaming go 2-0 up. 
He said he wanted to see players improve in search. Well, improve from game two. Karma four and one. Tej is two and one. Skump three and oh. Only Krim looking for a kill. Only one. Might actually find it here. Gina forced to back away. I'll take a force on the attack. They flooded over towards the B site. Time ticking. And Karma might get shot in the back. He's going back and forth, but he has too many jobs right now. He's got to watch flank because Krim6 gets picked off, but he's also got pressure maybe coming up through mid tunnels. So he's got to make a play, but if anyone can, it might be him. There's kill number one. Reading number two, I think he might have seen the shadow. shadow. He should have at least. He's going to be here for it. Frosty, what can he even do? Karma making plays, but still just a 2v2. E6, though. They're split right now, and they got to find a bomb. They got to deal with Karma and TJ. TJ gets bomb checks. Karma, he gets the late flank. And he has information on general, and there both kills come in. TJ, by the way, also makes the play. Yeah. Spots out general to call out to Karma, tells him exactly where he is, and then he turns on the player up top steps and wins the gunfight as well. So big plays all the way around. 3-0 off the game. Yeah. Remember you wanted that close game five? Competitive, I believe, was the word you said. I, well, I, you know, <laughs> it, it still might bounce back. Still, I, I, we have it. It's been a bunch of close rounds. Every single round has been situational that's sure, come down okay. to a 1v1 or a 2v2, whatever it's been. And Opti Gaming have been making the bigger plays. It might end up being a blowout. But again, that's what I was saying. I'm less confident for E6 on this map than it was for Hacienda. I'm, although I don't expect three players to be 0-3. I'm not very confident in anyone when commas in this form in search. 7-1, and one, making just some good reads. Overall, but to your point, yeah, Diabolic, Chino, and Frosty all 0 3. General leading the way at 5 and 3, but needs a little bit of help. And more importantly, for E6, they've got to stop the round leading. And that's a nice first blood. Frosty finds TJ. Advantage E6. Of course, they are on the attacking side, though, and they still have to deal with dashing a sniper rifle. Either E6 made a good read, or they just simply heard TJ up top. The hit marker's not fun for anybody. Chino dancing with the devil. Skump, though, able to get one kill. Might have help for the second. By the way, Dashi's still top, but all the players trying to push and find him. Eventually, they take down Dashi. Skump, though, in the back the entire time, able to find a second. By the way, who is on the flank? It's Karma. <laughs> and yeah, gotta give them both. Yep, he cleans up both kills very quickly. And a round which looked as if maybe, maybe E6 could find their first win. And it's just blown wide open. Optic Gaming. Skunk does so well, playing his life, peeking, putting shots down, and of course, throughout all of this, he's buying Karma so much time to flank and get a very free kill and clean up the second. And it really has been four rounds where, like, E6, maybe outside of, like, getting the first bloods, have been making good plays. Yeah. They, they have a sniper up top. You don't get picked. You go pour on the pressure, take him down. They do that. It's just Skunk made the better play. And then Karma ends up flanking. Like, E6 is doing good. Optic Gaming is doing amazing. Yeah. To gaming with a lot of utility to potentially close this out. Tech 5 used. Karma has a war machine. Is he going to invest it here? It's a 9 and 1. This TJ is going to fly around the corner with Scum. Kismet with first blood. Another advantage for E6. But how long will this one last? This is where they just don't need to overtime. You get that first blood, you have control. And if you are going to challenge, you make sure you win the gunfight. Chino gets on the board. Gives E6 a, a 5v3 man advantage, and that bomb is down in the worst spot possible. So now I got a bunch of players, I think, what, only one SOG? And then a couple Maddoxes trying to get inside to deal with all these SOG players. Dashi, though, able to find a pick, but then Chino has slowed down at least in this round number five. Bear in mind, Commerce, 250 away from streaks here. What is that going to play into his mind as Dashi retrieves the bomb? It's a 2v4. I'm basically saying, all right, Dashi, let's see what you can do. And you make it close relatively quickly, and you can get bummed down. I might help. Up until then, really looking for a free kill. Can't catch anyone from E6 napping. Doesn't look like it just yet, at least. After those first couple kills fall, there's simply nothing you can do. And again, that's just a round for E6 where this time they do connect with the first blood. And I think you saw the idea from Opti Gaming. It's, I think Scump had the information. There's a player's shoulder peeking yeah. in the back, but then there's a guy up close, which DJ is prepared for. But as soon as he doesn't win that first one-on-one -on -one gunfight, there's nothing Scump can do for the trade. And it's just hopeless because if you fly in, yeah. best case scenario, you get one player and then you die. And then what's the difference between right. a 5v4 and a 4v3? doesn't really matter. And then, well, Chino just wins the 1v1 on Krim. And seals the deal from there. So E6 on the board. 
but obviously in quite a big hole. All right, climb their way out. Yeah, you got a very big mountain to climb to make a comeback here. Possible, just highly, highly unlikely. I guess the saving grace, of course, is the only other player for Optic with their specialist right now is Karma. Uh, Skump pushes over towards the B site. First blood, TJ. Big advantage for Optic Gaming is it is E6 on another attacking round. By the way, the man with bomb pushed out very aggressive, so. Or never mind, I take that back. He died on bomb. I thought Kizma had him for a second. Kizma, by the way, just dancing around. They're still trying to hunt him down. They found him. They might not even know that it's him. So trying to make something happen, but at the same time, 5v3 for Optic. More stuns come out. Grim collapses in with Scump. The war machine is out. Doesn't even need it. 5-1 Optic Gaming. Talk about a blowout here in the game five. You can talk about all those competitive rounds early. That wasn't one of them. No. That was a. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> around where E6, again, like, sort of try to get aggressive over towards the bomb, but by the time they did, everyone from Optic Gaming was here. He won the first two gunfights, and Kismet was doing what he can, but didn't even win the gunfight against Crim6 up top with the ICR, so one more round. That's all it takes. Sorry, you close out this game five, and you start your cross-divisional week very, very well. What's the road to recovery after a really poor Fort Worth? All starts here. I mean, you only need one more round to your point. They played game five exceptionally well, and it's mainly down to the performance from the three-time world champ. Nine and one. That's Dash of Peaks outer. That's the play of his life. Stay alive. I don't want to feed any momentum over towards E6. Come with the kill. Because it will trade for me full. Trying to get any bit of clearance you can, but uh, a lot of players in power positions that you have to deal with for E6. And once you even deal with some of them, then you got Kismet just going to be annoying with that SOG. And well, the rotation's in. You can see players not wasting any time. Chino's going for the wrap back, but he might be here just a little bit late. Of course, Optic doesn't know exactly how many players have wrapped back. But Chino, of course, might just be open for good time. And Crim6 is going to spot him out. Chino's just going to get shot in the back. Doesn't even make the read. So this is Optic Gaming 4v3, 23 seconds. They're saving grace. Kismet with the information on when bomb is going down. Is it going to be enough? Well, Diabolic drops. It's a 4v2. Kismet, you can try and flank all you want. Grim's watching it. Frosty for the clutch. Gump's falling off the map, so hold on a second from a 1v4 to a 1v2. Eight seconds left. If you could stay alive, maybe try and force something. Not going to happen. Optic just demolished E6 in that game five. Those are just brutal four maps in a row from either direction, but either way, I think that's a really good win for Optic to get. Like, you know, you have a bumpy map two, you have a bumpy map three, but I think you get a win on board. You terrible. take down a team that just got, yeah, terrible map three, but you take down a team that just got top six. You get back into the swing of things. You start your week off right. Even with those two terrible bumpy maps, whatever you <laughs> want to call them, Optic Gaming should probably be happy with that win. Yeah. Should almost definitely be happy with that win. Most, most definitely will be. Is uh, I think the story on the, the flip side there for E6 is, well, you knew what your woes were kind of coming in. They're still your woes, Chance. The, the hard point's not great, and I mean, that payload search and destroy. If, you, if you're going to rely on those kind of two, three, fives, as so many teams historically in Call of Duty Sports have, you've got to make sure you win the fives, otherwise I mean, you're basically left a, a sitting duck. And again, that 